booking. Partial underwriting of the acquisition costs of the nightly business report has been provided by the Southern Hospitality Corporation, owners of Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers. This is the nightly business report made possible by the Digital Equipment Corporation with its VAX family of network computing systems connecting the front office, the factory floor, the engineering center, and the MIS department. Digital has it now. By Business Week magazine. Providing timely business information to over six million decision makers every week. Business Week, America's business news weekly. And by Kidder Peabody. For over 120 years, one of the world's leading investment firms, serving the financial needs of individuals, corporations, and governments. Kidder Peabody, professionalism worldwide. And public television stations across the nation. Good evening, everyone. After six years of discussions, the nation's Roman Catholic bishops are about to issue their long-awaited pastoral letter on the U.S. economy. The letter, called Economic Justice for All, calls for taking action to change the U.S. economy to help the poor and the unemployed. But as Bob Friedman reports from Washington, some are criticizing the bishop's letter as long on rhetoric, but short on details. In Bishop William Friend's parish around Shreveport, Louisiana, unemployment is at 12 percent, the result of depressed farm and oil economies. The Conference of Bishops pastoral letter lists unemployment as a major problem. And Bishop Friend hopes the letter will give him support in meetings with local government and business leaders. It reflects broad consultation, a lot of reflection, and a lot of prayer. It's not something that I, for example, individually could offer as an economist and a, and a church leader. The bishops have been working for six years on the pastoral letter titled Economic Justice for All. To help the nation's poor, the bishops call for full employment in the U.S. through tax, interest rate, and spending policies. When you have widespread unemployment and people do not have jobs, it affects them psychologically. It affects their self-esteem, which in turn affects their family life. The pastoral letter calls for protection of midsize and family farms and assistance for U.S. workers injured by jobs going overseas. Critics of the bishop's letter say it lacks specifics and places too much emphasis on the need for government help as opposed to private sector assistance for the poor. Whether just throwing more money at it, having more federal involvement is going to solve the problem. I think that's the, the side they come down on. I think there's a lot of questions as to whether that's going to be the best way to go about solving these problems. Bishops counter they are not economists and offer their letter to the community and government for moral direction. There's no such thing as an economic issue that's not also a moral issue. And to get the people to think in terms of the economy uh, as, as a moral reality which we're responsible for shaping. The pastoral letter also looks beyond the U.S. in the attack on poverty. The bishops note the U.S. role in providing food and weapons to the world and call on the U.S. to play a bigger role in reversing worldwide poverty. In Washington, Bob Friedman for the Nightly Business Report. Wix Companies is wasting little time in its expansion away from its traditional home furnishings and building materials businesses. The company says it will go forward tomorrow with its buyout of Lear Sigler's common stock at $93 a share in a deal valued at about $1.7 billion. Lear Sigler's board accepted that bid late last night to sidestep a possibly hostile takeover attempt by the investor group AFG Partners. Lear Sigler is a diversified aerospace, automotive, and electronics company, and both firms say the merger will be a good fit. In an apparent attempt to fend off any potential takeover bids, the board of Holiday Corporation, parent of Holiday Inns, has approved a recapitalization plan for the company that will pay stockholders a special cash dividend of $65 a share. As part of the plan, about 10% of Holiday's stock will be distributed to certain members of management as incentives, and special new limits will be imposed on the voting rights of any stockholder who owns more than a 10% stake in the company. Paul? After advancing some nine points on the Dow in the first two days of this week, the stock market opened on the upside this morning. But as soon as the industrial average neared that 1900 level with a three-point gain at 10 p.m., it met with pre-programmed selling resistance again, and that sent prices into a downward spiral until noon when the Dow was off nearly 10 and three-quarter points, with losers leading gainers by an eight-to-five margin. The Dow's deficit would have been worse had it not been for good strength in Eastman Kodak in response to some cheery company predictions for 1987. 
That, along with increasing takeover and restructuring situations, real or imagined, brought in new buying in mid-afternoon. And when the bond market began to rally, stocks followed with enough of an upturn to cut the closing loss in the Dow Industrial Average to only 2.25, putting it at 1893.70. The theoretical high of the day just above 1909, the low way down around 1877. The uh, volume today uh, moved up rather smartly from uh, yesterday's pace, uh, and the uh, up volume exceeded down volume by better than 9 million shares. Dow Transports up 3.5 points, coming back from an 8-point loss yesterday. Utilities gained a respectable 1.10. Dow 65 up nearly a point. The closing tick uh, just a very modestly positive plus 69. Standard & Poor's 500 lost 0.44. Similar losses in the 100 and, or the 400 and the 100. Spock 250 off just a small fraction. New York Stock Exchange Index dropped exactly a quarter of a point, about an 8-point loss in the NASDAQ composite. Value line off 0.19 and the Wilshire 5000 off just about three and a third points. The bond market opened on a slightly firmer note in what was generally viewed as a bit of a technical rally following recent weakness because of last week's lukewarm reception to the Treasury's big quarterly refunding auction. Things picked up nicely, however, after the Federal Reserve unexpectedly and liberally injected funds into the banking system in what is known as a coupon pass and that is often interpreted as an easing of monetary policy. Looking at the long-term treasuries of 2016, a gain of 13.30 seconds, a quarter-point move on the upside at the, uh, on the GM 8 percenters and the bond index up 0.60. Jacksonville Electric Revenue Municipals gained a quarter to 97 and three quarters, and finally Fed funds closing just below 6% where they ended yesterday. I'll be back shortly to show you where the action was in today's stock market. On the precious metals markets today, both gold and silver rose, while platinum closed sharply lower for the third consecutive day, closing at $528.20 the ounce. On the New York currency markets, the dollar was mostly lower, closing down against all major currencies except the British pound. And on the New York Mercantile Exchange, oil prices fell slightly, with West Texas Intermediate losing four cents a barrel. In London, North Sea Brent crude was unchanged for the second day in a row. Hard hit by the lower labor costs of their foreign competitors, the nation's manufacturers are increasingly relying on automation as a way to fight back. And the proliferation of robots and other machines is also expanding the role of computers in American factories. Trudy Gallant reports that the integration of computers in all types of factory operations is the focus of the Auto Fact Conference now underway in Detroit. Voice activated inventory control, industrial marking and tracking, cell controllers which send information from management to the plant and back. Those are some of the advances in factory automation featured in the huge exhibit hall for AutoFact 86. While some fear more automation will mean fewer jobs for industry, the conference chair argues that automation is essential to compete in a worldwide market. Well, I think there's a serious international challenge. Uh, if there was not a serious international challenge that's simply, quite simply taking jobs away from Americans, we wouldn't see many of the layoffs. And a lot of that is due to the lack of automation. Now, touch labor in many products is becoming a smaller portion of those products than it has been in the past. So the fact that uh, people would argue that we're losing all of our jobs to cheaper labor starts to become uh, less of a valid argument. The conference is stressing SIM, Computer Integrated Manufacturing, which is the careful planning and linking of different pieces of high-tech equipment used in a manufacturing process, from the computer-aided design used by engineers to the use of the part itself on the factory floor. Martin Marietta Energy Systems is this year's lead award winner for improving manufacturing performance. As the company has learned, automation is expensive. It's already made a $50 million investment, but it has expectations of a 25% reduction of cost per increment of service by the early 1990s. We have uh, outlined a total uh, plan incorporating the personnel organization, the manufacturing people, the CAD people, finance, and uh, I think that comprehensive program, a long-term strategic plan, management commitment, and some exciting integration that's occurring today, I think is the basic reason that we uh, captured the LEED Award, which we're very proud of. AutoFact speakers stress that the payoff in computer-integrated manufacturing will be in the long term. But they stress that the increases in productivity, response time, and flexibility will be well worth the wait. In Detroit, I'm Trudy Gallant for the Nightly Business Report. Well, and soon, computers may not only be running machines, but thinking for themselves. Xerox today announced that it's teaming up with the University of California's Graduate School of Education to fund research into the development of artificial intelligence in computers. 
Xerox chairman David Kearns says the ultimate goal is to make it possible for computers to train human workers for the jobs of the future. We need workers who can absorb change, who can absorb new ideas, and share them easily with others. We are entering an era of lifelong learning that merges work and education. Most jobs of the future will be restructured at least every seven years. Businesses will need people who have learned how to learn because work and learning are becoming inseparable. By 1990, three out of four jobs will require some education or technical training beyond high school. Kern says the research into artificial intelligence that his company is funding will be conducted by a new nonprofit group called the Institute for Research and Learning. Linda? Lorimar Telepictures has decided that it would rather produce TV shows than own TV stations. By what the firm calls mutual agreement, Lorimar Telepictures today dropped a deal to buy six television stations from Storer Communications for more than a billion dollars. Earlier, Lorimar dropped an associated deal to buy a Miami TV station from Wometco Broadcasting. With the TV station purchases now terminated, Lorimar Telepictures says it won't be going through with a planned stock offering for a new subsidiary, Lorimar Telepictures Entertainment. Paul? Incidentally, Lorimar's stock today moved up one and three quarters to close at 23 and a quarter on the American exchange. Let's go back and review what happened to the Dow Industrial Average. Down only two and a quarter points after being off over nine at mid-session. We're now still within uh, reaching distance of that uh, 1900 level. Declines led advances by just about an eight to seven margin. A lot more new highs than new lows, 63 to 11. Topping the active list on four and a half million shares, Archer Daniels Midland, up one and a quarter. The stock reacting positively to Drexel Burnham analysts who said there is a turnaround taking place in the corn and grain milling industry. Holiday Corp moving up three eighths on that recapitalization plan you heard about. Eastman Kodak up three and eight points. As I mentioned, cheery outlook for 87, and we're gonna have a lot more details on that in just a moment. Armco was down an eighth, and so was Oak Industries. Pandic, the